starting us off at number 10, the Caden meteorite. While it may not have been the biggest meteorite to crash into the earth, it certainly raised many questions once it was here. On December 30th, 1980, what looked like a fireball was seen in the sky hurling its way towards the Soviet military base. Now, upon impact, they discovered a surprisingly small stone weighing only about four pounds, but it was what was inside the stone that caused a commotion. Inside the meteorite was a wide range of incredibly rare and unique minerals, many of which are not found in nature, causing quite a bit of confusion and debate around the stone's origins. Some scientists believe it originated from the Martian moon of Phobos, but no one really knows for certain. While there have been several meteorites from Mars to land on Earth, if suspicions are true, the Caden would be the first Martian moon rock to be found on Earth. And who knows what that could mean. Next up at number 9, a piece of the moon. As fate would have it, a piece of the moon made its way into the desert of Morocco and in 2014, it was discovered and sold privately to a collector. The moon chunk weighed about 6 pounds and was extremely rare as very few pieces of lunar material have been known to crash land onto the planet. Now as cool as this seems, scientists have discovered that moon dust can cause huge health risks and long term exposure is highly toxic and has the potential to even cause death. So whoever has this piece of moon rock better have it sealed tight because it could be the end of them. Next up at number 8, Tomanawos. To understand the craziness of this meteorite, we have to rewind a few billion years. Well, 4.5 billion years to be exact. Meteorites are usually made of iron and nickel. These iron and nickel atoms were formed inside stars that eventually exploded, sending the elements rocketing across the nebula. Over time, the elements were forced together to create what we call protoplanets, which were the first planet-like orbs of the solar system. Now, 4.5 billion years ago, Tomanawos was at the core of one of these protoplanets, but at some point in time, likely collided with another protoplanet, sending huge chunks back into space. Then, 17,000 years ago, it crashed down into the Earth and landed on an ice cap in Canada. It wasn't discovered until thousands of years later, and by that time, it had made quite the journey down to Oregon. The 15 ton rock caused quite a storm and even a lawsuit when in 1902 a man tried to steal it from the indigenous people and charge others to see the strange and mysterious space rock. But the joke was on him as the Oregon Iron and Steel Company actually owned the land where he'd found the meteorite and sued for its return. Whatever it was, there was something about this meteorite that drew people in. And who knows, maybe it really was cursed. Next up at number 7, a strange black object. In July of this year, Australian farmer Mike Miners was doing his usual morning survey of his farm when all of a sudden he spotted something that caught his eye. There in the distant part of the grasslands was a large jet black object measuring roughly 9 feet and sticking straight up out of the ground. Unsure of what was going on, he took a closer look at the object and eventually decided to call the Civil Aviation Safety Authority to see if they could help. Once he was on the phone with them, they quickly urged him to call NASA directly. Eventually, it was discovered to be a piece of space junk, likely from the SpaceX Dragon capsule, but many conspiracy theorists didn't seem to buy this answer, believing it to be some kind of remnant from a UFO. And to tell you the truth, I have no idea if those conspiracy theorists are losing their minds or if they are onto something, but anything that is falling from outer space will always freak me out. Coming in at number 6, the microscopic diamond. There are many things people can expect to find falling from the sky, but tiny microscopic space diamonds would not be at the top of my list. Back in 1969, an unexpected meteorite came crashing down into Mexico, which led to one of the biggest manhunts trying to find all the scattered fragments. One of the strange finds were small diamond fragments containing, now stay with me here, isotopic signatures of materials formed prior to the existence of our solar system. Which listen, I'm not really blessed with much of a science brain, but essentially it's really freaking crazy what they found. The origins of the diamond is up for debate. There are two theories about how they came to be. The first is the formation inside a giant star that long ago exploded in a supernova, and the second 
is from an asteroid impact in space. But either way, it's an incredibly strange find that raised more questions upon its discovery than it answered. Next up at number 5. A molten object. Maybe it was aliens, or maybe it's some cursed artifact from outer space, but either way, no one had any clue what they'd found. Back in 2016, an inexplicable molten object fell from the sky in Siberia and was actually caught on film. Two YouTubers said they received the footage from a witnessing Russian man and wasted no time posting the video for all to see. Whatever it was was covered in green flames, an unrecognizable white foamy substance and grabbed the attention of local firemen who can be seen attempting to put out the giant and strange green flames. Many online viewers were quick to try and figure out what exactly they were witnessing and some said it was probably a satellite that fell onto the earth, but some swear they saw a UFO hovering over Turkey just three days prior and believe the object to have been the crashed extraterrestrial ship. Maybe the aliens were trying to send us a message? Let's just hope it was a crashed satellite. Coming Coming in at number 4, fireballs. There are few things that make us worry about the end of days more than giant fire orbs raining down from the sky and terrorizing our planet. Well, in September of 2019, it seemed like just that was happening in Chile when huge and mysterious flaming objects lit up the sky cascading over the largest island in Chile, horrifying the locals. The fireballs plummeted to the earth and caused seven bushfires across the island, though luckily no one was injured. Initially, most assumed it was meteorites crashing down, but after a few days inspecting the site, no traces were found at any of the seven locations. Officials were confused by the findings as the only other logical explanation would be space debris, but that as well seemed to have been ruled out by many. So if it wasn't a meteorite and it wasn't a rogue piece of space debris, what could have fallen from the sky? Could it have anything to do with an unknown space civilization? I guess we'll just have to wait and see. Coming in at number 3, metal shreds. Long before Chile saw the flaming balls of fire crashing down, Argentina was met with an equally terrifying phenomenon. Back in 1991, out of nowhere, giant shards of flaming metal appeared glowing in the sky. The ominous showers appeared to be darting down towards the planet terrifying the locals. This metallic rain turned out to be fragments from a Russian space station named the Salyut 7, which to this day is still considered to be one of the largest human-made objects to re-enter the atmosphere. Now, of course, engineers made many attempts to guide the fragments toward the Atlantic Ocean, but as the station was in a low orbit to the planet, they were not really able to properly redirect anything. So soon the 88,000 pounds of metal were crashing down to the earth, and although no one was injured, it certainly terrorized all who witnessed it. Coming in at number 2, Vladimir Komarov. Infamously known as the man who fell from space, Vladimir was a famous Russian astronaut or cosmonaut as they were called during the Cold War space race. Back in 1967, he embarked on a crazy mission that although he was completely trained to complete, was ultimately rushed. Allegedly, the spacecraft had a multitude of structural issues, and despite engineers warning the Soviet officials that the craft was not ready, they continued with the mission as planned. Vladimir took off and made his way up into the eternity of space and even executed 16 orbits around the Earth. But something went awry with his mission, so he was instructed to make his way back down to Earth. However, things went south upon trying to re-enter the atmosphere when his parachute would not engage, and Vladimir plummeted back towards the Earth, crashing in a horrific explosion. Rumor has it that while he was plummeting to his fate, he was screaming at the Soviets for forcing him to do this mission. And while he may not have been something that originated from space, it was certainly cursed from the very beginning of its journey. And last up in our number one spot, the Roswell Incident. Back in 1947, a huge metallic object crashed down on the earth, causing a major uproar for conspiracy theorists 
across the globe. Now, normally I'm not one to jump on the conspiracy wagon, but I don't know how anyone can look me in the eye and tell me that this is not the spinning image of a flying saucer. I mean, come on. Now, here is where it gets crazy. After the dust from the initial sighting settled, the Roswell Air Force released a statement admitting that they had found a flying disc, but then quickly retracted that statement saying instead it was simply a conventional weather balloon and have stuck to this story ever since. But this change in description caused many to believe the government was covering up valuable information. Then in 1979, Lieutenant Jesse Marcel, a key figure in the whole debacle, was interviewed for a documentary about the incident and admitted that despite what they told newspapers in 1947, that he truly believed it was an extraterrestrial entity that was found that day and that the government had ordered him to keep quiet. Now, that isn't suspicious at all. So what do you guys think? Government weather balloon or top secret alien spaceship? Starting off this list in our number 10 spot we have time travel. The first large scale image to be publicly released that was taken by the James Webb telescope was a mega deep sky image of a galaxy cluster called SMACS0723 which sits over 5 billion light years away from us. The reason this cluster is so profound is because it offers us a glimpse into the early universe. This cluster, despite only being a couple hundred million light years across, which in the cosmos really isn't a large space at all, still is the home to thousands of galaxies. But if you look even closer at the image, you can see even more. In between these galaxies are twisting and arcing bands of light, which are even more distant galaxies, but their light is being distorted as it passes through this dense cluster of galaxies. Some of these galaxies are the oldest ever observed, some over 13 billion years old. And this is important because we don't yet know fully how galaxies formed in the early days of the universe and James Webb is helping us put those puzzle pieces together. In our number 9 spot today we have the complex galaxies. In with these distant galaxies comes a realization about their structures. Some of these galaxies are far more complex than astronomers had once expected. In a study into the deep field image, researchers found a surprisingly high number of distant galaxies that are shaped like disks. Basically, while using Hubble, scientists believed or had a theory that early galaxies were often more distorted by their interactions with neighboring galaxies and that these distant galaxies were more irregularly shaped than ones nearby, which not unlike the Milky Way, are normally more regularly formed in the shape of disks. This changed though with the Webb observations because this telescope revealed that there are up to 10 times as many distant disk shaped galaxies than what was previously thought. According to some experts, because of the fact that this contradicts what was once thought about the evolution of galaxies that much more research needs to be put into this specifically to figure out exactly what this means and how it changes our theories moving forward. In our number 8 spot today we have Cosmic Noon. Moving on a little later into galactic evolution, one study into Webb's observations focused on Cosmic Noon which was a period approximately 3 billion years after the Big Bang. It is an important period because of the fact that this is the time when star formation peaked in the universe and the most most light was created. An astronomer at the University of California, Santa Cruz, named Ren Seuss, examined images taken by both Hubble and Webb of galaxies at cosmic noon, and this is when Ren realized something. The infrared wavelengths detected by Webb showed that the massive galaxies looked significantly smaller than they did in the Hubble images. Of this discovery, Seuss said, quote, it potentially changes our whole view of how galaxy sizes evolve over time. Based on Hubble images, it was thought or suggested suggested that galaxies start out small and grow larger over time, but these web images are showing that maybe this isn't the case and that things might be a little more complicated than anticipated. In our number 7 spot today we have the exoplanet atmosphere. While there are many tasks that the James Webb will be taking on through its career, one of them is to study alien exoplanets, most especially to figure out what their atmospheres are made of. To do this, when the exoplanet passes in front of its parent star, the light from the star of course passes through the 
planet's atmosphere before continuing on to its journey wherever. Whatever the atmosphere is made up of, whatever the elements are, it changes the nature of the light and this is something that James Webb can pick up on. WASP-96b is an exoplanet that we've had our eye on for a while now, and it is a giant, gassy planet that orbits close to its parent star, and now it is being used to test Webb's abilities before moving on to more challenging targets, such as Earth-like planets that orbit Sun-like stars. There are a few incredible discoveries that Webb has made in doing this, like the first detection in an exoplanet atmosphere of sulfur dioxide. And new readings are even revealing signs of active chemistry within the atmosphere. This is all to say that these tests are yielding incredible results, which is extremely promising when it comes to the future and the understanding of exoplanets. In our number 6 spot today we have star formation. People who are busy studying galactic chemistry have been receiving some more complicated and interesting data from Webb. One analysis examined light emitted by galaxies that had a red shift of 5 or greater. In this analysis they found a surprising richness in elements like oxygen. This is important because astronomers had thought that the process of chemical enrichment, which is the process where stars fuse hydrogen and helium in order to form heavier elements, they thought that this took a while, but this analysis made them realize that it is happening in earlier galaxies. This has led experts to say that they really need to start rethinking the speed at which we believe star formation occurs. In our number 5 spot today we have the star life cycle. Speaking of star formation, Webb is showing us both the birth as well as the death of stars. Images produced by Webb of both the Carina Nebula as well as the Southern Ring Nebula are incredible. The Carina Nebula is a star nursery. It is the birthplace for new stars and the powerful Webb instruments are able to pierce through the gas clouds and show us unbelievable moments in these stars creations. On the other end is the Southern Ring Nebula which is produced by a star not unlike the sun shortly after its demise. By being able to study these different star life stages we can piece together more about the stories of these stars themselves. In our number 4 spot today we have starlight. Back in September of this year, 2022, the James Webb Space Telescope spotted a set of concentric angular rings around a giant but distant star. Of course we needed to know more, so researchers dove further into the images and found something incredible. A study revealed that these ripples turned out to be puffs of organic dust that were created and then spread across the universe by an odd star system. This might just seem like a cool space occurrence, but this marked the first time researchers were able to find evidence of starlight moving visible matter beyond our solar system, which is absolutely incredible. I mentioned how this star system is odd, and that is because it is made up of two stars that orbit each other. In our number 3 spot today we have Stevens Quintet. You may be familiar with this term because it was another one of the first photos publicly released from the James Webb Telescope, but it's possible that maybe you didn't know exactly what you were looking at. Stevens Quintet is a visual group of 5 galaxies, 4 of which form the first compact galaxy group ever discovered. These 4 galaxies will all likely eventually merge with each other, but until that happens we have these stunning visuals of them all dancing together. Space telescopes like James Webb have provided some insights into some emissions coming from between the galaxy group. It is now believed to be shockwave in the intergalactic gas which is caused by one galaxy falling into the center of the group at, you know, roughly the speed of several million kilometers per hour. You know, just space stuff. In our number 2 spot today we have the DART mission. So I'm sure we all remember earlier this year when NASA's DART mission slammed into an asteroid just to see if we could potentially redirect an asteroid in the future if it were on a collision course with Earth. They tested this planetary defense mechanism and it actually seems to have been largely successful and among those watching was none other than the James Webb Telescope. Since the mission, information that Webb collected has been sent back to us on Earth and it is giving us more insight into how to ensure we are using this technology to our advantage and to see how we can improve it. In our number 1 spot today we have the cloud discoveries. Speaking of exoplanets, James Webb has observed one that has evidence of silicate rich clouds. Well, it's actually a brown dwarf that is about 20 times the size of Jupiter. It is called VHS124. 56b and it orbits two small red dwarfs and is 72 light years away from Earth. Webb has also used its skills to reveal details in a gas cloud called Doridus 30, which received the nickname to 
tarantula due to its very spooky appearance. This tarantula nebula is located about 161,000 light years away and it resides in the large Magellanic Cloud and I mean aside from our very own Milky Way, it is the brightest star forming region in our neck of the cosmic woods. Kicking off the list at number 10. Gliese 581G. Kicking this list off with an exoplanet hiding in the constellation Libra. Yeah, to all my fellow Libras out there, this one's for you. Happy early birthday. It was discovered back in 2010, but Gliese 581G, still to this day, its confirmation is hard to pinpoint. Yeah, the thing with exoplanets is that they're a little far away. They're a little hard to see out there. But somehow the fine minds over at the University of Puerto Rico at Arecibo calls Gliese 581 the top candidate for alien life. You heard it here folks, there we go. It's only sitting 20 light years away from our very own sun and Gliese 581G is three times as large as Earth. So to all my Libras, bring a friend or two, let's party it up, we got room. If you're a fan of New Year's parties, again, this is the planet for you. Every 30 days we're counting down to a new year, so we don't have to wait too long to party. Off to a good start. Number 9, HD 85512B. This next planet's in HD, Chris, there we go. Put on your 3D glasses. Announced in 2011 alongside 50 other planets. Okay. HD 85512B was discovered by the High Accuracy Radial Velocity Planet Searcher Instrument, or to save you some breath, HARPS for short, over in Chile. Yeah, Chile's casually exploring 50 planets over there on their weekend, okay. It's wild how some of these discoveries happened so long ago, but we don't talk about them nearly enough. Again, same deal as the Gliese 581G, this planet too is three times the size of Earth. It's actually 3.5 times bigger. Yeah, as far as commutes go, it'll take some time to get there. Yeah, we're still, we're still working on that part. The HD planet hides around 35 light years away from us. This one you can find in the constellation Vela, aka the snail. Is it truly habitable? Is there water on this planet? Well, that's to be determined. Our boy James Webb's gonna take a peek real soon. Number eight, Gliese 581e. Wait a minute, how many Gleeses are there? Is a single Gliese a goose? What's going on here? In typical part two fashion, I had to include another Gliese. There's actually four of them in total. I'm not gonna do all four though. For more than four years, the HARP spectrograph attached to the ESO telescope in Chile, they were finding groundbreaking discoveries for four years straight. Astronomers found the lightest exoplanet so far to this day. The lightest planet, that's crazy. This one is quite small compared to others on this list. Gliese 581e is only twice the mass of our Earth, whereas the planet furthest out, Gliese 581d, orbits its star every 67 days while Gliese 581e completes its orbit every three days. You know what I mean? Yeah, having a birthday every three days? Oh, what a nightmare that would be. I'm never going to this planet. This, this one can stay off our radar. A little small Gliese, little Gliese. Number seven, carbon on Mars. It's one thing to have Elon Musk tweeting about going to Mars or whatever he's doing over there, buying Twitter, I guess. But when NASA talks about it, I get a weird feeling, you know? It's, it's, it's NASA, you know, they're old school. They're like, we may have found carbon 40 years ago. Yeah. That's just it, that's the tweet. In 2022, just back in January, NASA's Curiosity rover measured carbon signatures on Mars. This is huge. Paul Mahaffey, principal investigator of the sample analysis at Mars, he says, quote, we're finding things on Mars that are tantalizingly interesting, but we would really need to get more evidence to say that we've identified life, end quote. Okay, so we're close. It sounds like we're a little close, I don't know. Side note, imagine going on a Willy Wonka trip to Mars with Elon. Do we wanna go? Like, he's announcing all these trips to Mars. I don't want to do that. I can't even drive to Ottawa for four hours, let alone Mars for years. No way. I'm homesick already. Number six, Ryan Graves UFO sightings. I mentioned this a little bit back in part one, but I of course have to add more. Back in 2017, a 22 million dollar defense program was put in place. It was called the Advanced Aerospace Threat Identification Program. Now its purpose was to study military encounters with UFOs. And at this point, Navy pilots were coming out with their own story. Their eyewitness account of seeing a UFO UAP, or a UFO if you're old school. Eventually, come 2019, senators felt the need to be briefed on these sightings. It was that serious. After a vote by the Senate Intelligence Committee in June 2020, it was agreed that UAP reports were now to get added to the Intelligence Authorization Act for 2021 and going forward. That's crazy. That's why more and more footage is coming out now every other week. You know what I mean? These incidents were filmed ages ago, but only now are they being released. It's kind of cool. According to the Times, 120 incidents were studied during this case. And it turns out the US military is not responsible responsible for any of the 120. If they happen to be advanced drones sent to spy on the military, it's kind of important to find out who sent them, know what I mean? And recently, a former Navy pilot, Ryan Graves, he spoke out to 60 Minutes, and he explained that these UAPs would pop up during training exercises 
every day for at least a couple of years. He says, and I quote, if these were tactical jets from another country that were hanging out up there, it would be a massive issue. But because it looks slightly different, we're not willing to actually look at the problem in the face. We're happy to just ignore the fact that these are out there watching us train every day. That's a quote from Ryan Graves, real pilot. And these are goosebumps for me. Awesome, I'm terrified. Are aliens real? What are we doing, man? Like, let's move on before I faint. My gosh. Number five, Milky Way radio burst. On April 28th, 2020, two radio telescopes detected an intense pulse of radio waves, and they only lasted just a millisecond, but they left astronomers baffled. The reason for this is because this was the first time a fast radio burst had been detected this close to Earth. This signal was located only 30,000 light years from Earth, which places it in our Milky Way galaxy. That's pretty damn close. The Canadian Hydrogen Intensity Mapping Experiment, or again, CHIME, if you want to save breath, they explained that the signal was so easy to pick up that CHIME wasn't even looking its direction and it still noticed the signal. It was loud and clear right in their peripheral vision. And another telescope, STAIR2, also saw it clear as day. Well, it looks like whatever the cause for the signal, someone or something, we saw it. So, now what? We found you, you can come out now. Number four, the Lorimer burst. This is a fast radio burst that was detected long ago. This was back in 2007, and it was named, of course, after the person who spotted it. Duncan Lorimer. Well, actually, it was discovered when Duncan assigned his student, David Narkovec, to look through archival data taken in 2001 by the Parks Radio Dish in Australia. That's when they noticed. After analyzing this data, it was found that there was a dispersed burst that occurred on July 24th, 2001. This burst was less than five milliseconds long, and it was located just three degrees from the small megalenic cloud. It still isn't quite clear what caused said signal, but it's thought that perhaps it may have been a singular event, such as a supernova, or an Avengers level threat. One of the two. Number three, light shifts. Back in 2015, a Penn State astronomer named Jason Wright explained that there were pretty erratic and spontaneous shifts in the light that was coming from a star that was newly discovered. Yeah, shifts in light. What's, uh, what's that about? This star sits about 1,280 light years away from Earth, and these shifts were very similar as if something was passing in front of our view of the star. Scientists weren't able to connect this to any exoplanets or meteors or anything like that, so in turn, Jason whipped up an interesting theory that's lived rent-free in my head ever since. He stated that it's possible that the shifts are caused by massive objects passing in front of the star in a slow orbit, like an array of massive satellites or a structure, like the you know type of thing that would be produced by an intelligent and civilized life form. Or maybe it's an asteroid, one of the two. Either way, I'm scared, again. Number two, Mount Rainier. Not to be confused with Mount Chiliad, although there's definitely aliens there as well. Mount Rainier in Washington was bumping and buzzing back in 1947. Pilot Kenneth Arnold made the first modern report of a flying saucer, or a UAP. Apparently it was a flying egg, actually, that's what it looked like. Kenneth saw nine circular shaped objects flying in formation, the classic formation, and they were flying at twice the speed of sound. So the Idaho pilot told the Air Force and they laughed it off. They didn't believe him at all. He took this claim to his grave. Kenneth stood by what he saw until his death later in 1984. He said that he saw UAPs. He reached out to the Seattle Times in 1977, long before the movie Signs was made, and he said, I made my report because I thought it was my duty. It was the only proper and American thing to do. I saw what I saw. End quote. And also, end point. I'm, again, terrified. And finally, number one the lights. Okay, imagine you're driving home one night after a long shift at work, maybe you worked late and it's midnight. You're driving and you see a V formation, the classic formation in the sky made up of yellow and orange lights. Do you pull over? Do you assume you're just, you know, beyond exhausted and maybe this is all in your head? Because that's what I would do. Back in 2001, on July 14th, drivers along the New Jersey Turnpike saw just that. It was a touch after midnight and cars legit pulled over and people got out to get a better look at what was in the sky. Everybody looked at this thing for around 15 minutes. It was just hovering over top of the Arthur Kill waterway right between Staten Island and New Jersey. Just floating there. Just doing alien stuff. One eyewitness, Joe Mavasio, recalls the sighting as one of the most amazing most amazing, one of the most amazing things he had ever seen. And then just like that, the lights vanished. They faded out one by one in typical alien fashion. Daniel Tarrant of the Carteret Police Department recalls seeing this with his own eyes as well. It was 16 golden covered lights in a V formation. Aliens are fun and all, but keep your eyes on the roads, my friends, you know? I'm not looking at anything. Aliens are not, 10 and two, we're getting home. That's it, seatbelts, I'm checking those mirrors. No aliens back there, we're good. Mm -hmm.